Toyota is the world's largest automobile manufacturer, with annual sales exceeding 10 million in 2012 and approximately holding that level year after year. Starting with a hybrid Toyota Prius in 1997, the firm has been hailed to be a fuel-efficient automobile leader. It now has over 40 hybrid vehicle types on the market. Toyota was a pioneer in clean, green, and efficient vehicles, and it was even ahead of the game with the limited production completely electric RAV4 EV. Toyota began work on a second generation RAV4 EV in 2010, partnering with a small California based firm you may have heard of with the name Tesla Motors. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, described the relationship as historic when it first began, citing his long admiration for Toyota. Simultaneously, Akio Toyota, Toyota's current president, hailed his test drive of the Tesla Roadster as the wind of the future. The manufacture of the RAV4 EV in California lasted from 2012 to 2014. Despite this, Tesla and Toyota split ways following disagreements and confrontations. Following this, Toyota launched its own electric vehicle branch in 2016. Despite all of this EV knowledge and early industry leadership across several eras and products, Toyota currently does not sell a single battery electric vehicle. Tesla pioneered the electric vehicle business in the 21st century and it continues to grow at a rapid pace. The corporation also threatens to eat away at Toyota's gas car and electrified industries, threatening to leave them behind. Toyota is retaliating in a non-obvious way. Tesla, whose market capitalization has now surpassed Toyota's, isn't taking any prisoners. Tesla seeks to eliminate automotive firms that have stymied development by failing to invest effectively in electric vehicles. In today's video, we're going to discuss why Toyota is setting itself up for failure and why Tesla will eventually overshadow Toyota, the once known juggernaut of the automotive industry. Before we begin, make sure to keep yourself informed and engaged by subscribing to the channel, clicking the notification bell, and turning on all notifications so you won't miss out on our latest uploads. After World War II, the United States allying with Japan has benefited Toyota immensely by helping them learn from automakers from all over the world. Toyota studied the best industry ideas and integrated them into their offerings. The Japanese were known for making reliable vehicles. However, Toyota borrowed concepts such as well-engineered designs from German manufacturers and tiered marketing models from American OEMs. Toyota improved and optimized its manufacturing plants for high quality and low cost. They did this by creating the Toyota production system, which designs out inconsistencies in production and aims at eliminating waste. Toyota invented the quote-unquote just-in-time manufacturing to make only what's needed, only when it's needed, and only in the amount needed. They also relied on the concept of automation or an intelligent automation system where humans were more like supervisors for production machines and could stop the assembly line to fix abnormalities. They will then investigate a root cause to install a long-term solution such that it doesn't happen again. In 1970, General Motors controlled 40% of the U.S. car and light truck market, while Toyota only at 2%. However, Toyota's share increased fourfold by 1990, and in 2006, they held 13% share, whereas GM's market share had fallen to 26% on their home turf. With the massive overall dominance of the American automakers, a theory ran around that they let the Japanese take over the small car market because it was pretty meaningless to them at the time. This was clearly an enormous mistake in hindsight. Toyota kept growing and steadily reinvesting and learning, eventually moving into all the different verticals where the big three US companies used to play. Toyota and Volkswagen are now roughly tied for the top place in annual automobile production at 10 million, with GM being closer to 7 million. With 1.5 million units sold each year, the Toyota Corolla is the best-selling automobile globally. It is also the best-selling vehicle, having recently surpassed 50 million total units sold at the start of 2021. Toyota was, and continues to be, the automobile industry's juggernaut. The Toyota Prius was the first mass-produced hybrid car in the world. 
It had cutting-edge technologies that got excellent gas mileage. The Prius was declared to be one of the cleanest automobiles sold in the United States by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in 2007. And by 2017, the Prius has sold 6.1 million units in the 20 years since it was introduced in 1997. Toyota also introduced an early electric vehicle in 1997, the RAV4 EV, which was exclusively available in California to comply with the state's zero-emission vehicle mandate. The RAV4 EV had a single-speed transmission and a 1,000-pound nickel metal hydride battery with a charging capacity of 27 kilowatt hours. This gave the automobile a range of 95 miles or 153 kilometers, which is helpful for local commutes, which account for the vast majority of journeys. Only about 1,500 of these units were offered by Toyota. The RAV4 EV was produced from 1997 to 2003. Despite waiting lines of people who wished to buy the vehicle, it was eventually discontinued. Toyota tried again in 2010 with a second-generation RAV4 EV, this time collaborating with Tesla. This small startup at the time provided the powertrain and battery. In under three weeks, a prototype was produced, proving one of Elon Musk's favorite adages. The second-generation RAV4 EV was released in 2012 and had a lithium-ion battery with a 41 kilowatt hour capacity. It employed Tesla's induction motor instead of Toyota's permanent magnet motor in its hybrid vehicles. The electric RAV4 now has a range of 1 mile or 166 kilometers. Toyota invested $15 million in Tesla at the start of the business in 2010. The automobile giant also sold them a closed California facility for $42 million. This was the Numi facility, the sole remaining vehicle production plant on the West Coast at the time. It was part of a joint venture between Toyota and General Motors. It is now known as the Tesla Fremont facility. On the other hand, Tesla used this factory to build its Model S vehicle as well as components for other OEMs, including Toyota at the time. Toyota sold 2,500 of these new RAV4 EVs between 2012 and 2014. There were, however, cultural differences between the two firms. Relationships deteriorated, which was aggravated by automobile recalls. As a result, Toyota terminated its relationship with Tesla in 2016 and sold its investment in the company. In 2016, it was able to buy 2.3 million shares worth on the order of $500 million thanks to a $50 million investment made just a month before Tesla's IPO. Of course, if they had waited until today, the stock would be worth around $8.6 billion. Following this, Toyota announced the formation of a new branch dedicated to their own electric and electrified vehicles. However, by this time, Tesla has already delivered the Model S and the Model X and were working on something big. The future wind which Toyota president Akio Toyota felt when he first drove the Tesla Roadster appeared to be shifting. Tesla had developed a large number of electric vehicles and a leadership position by 2016. Elon Musk's master plan was for the business to produce a low-volume sports automobile called the Roadster, followed by a mid-volume, more affordable car called the Model S and the Model X, and then move on to a high-volume mass-market vehicle, which would be the beginning of Model 3. On the other hand, Toyota attempted to start at this third level with the RAV4 EV. This was a large-scale project that was unlikely to be financially stable, especially given the high cost of batteries at the time, which would take years to become more inexpensive. The advantage of starting with the Roadster was that even if only 2,500 vehicles were sold, each one was priced with huge margins to reinvest in the firm and future initiatives. Toyota's RAV4 EVs, on the other hand, was certainly losing Toyota money. As we saw with Tesla, this would have lasted for years and canceling the initiative made financial sense. Elon Musk and Tesla, on the other hand, saw the future as being electric, which helped them persevere even in the face of adversity. In some ways, it's also more acceptable than a company taking losses. On the other hand, an established automaker such as Toyota needs to demonstrate strong profitability for its stockholders. Elon Musk, interestingly, revealed in 2010 that he had always admired Toyota. 
Tesla's massive push towards a highly automated Model 3 manufacturing appears to be a case of an American automaker mimicking Toyota. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has claimed that he aims to be the top manufacturer in the world. Tesla appears to have studied Toyota's strategy to get there. After all, why not draw some cues from the world's top automaker? Toyota originally had a strong cutting-edge reputation with its hybrid electric vehicles. That's according to Masahiro Akita, a Japanese analyst with Credit Suisse. But now the market considers them as a follower in the electric vehicle business and maybe Tesla as the leader in terms of brand image or reputation. Now, Toyota needs to recover its previous position. Tesla had developed beyond from being a testbed for interesting electric vehicle technologies to becoming a full-fledged competitor of traditional automakers in the electric vehicle space, said James Chow, a managing director at IHS Automotive. Understandably, Toyota is separating itself from Tesla. According to Akio Toyota in 2016, Toyota's restructuring involves EVs as part of their new venture company. This implies that it would not be entirely devoted to electric vehicles. He anticipated that the new section would specialize in its expertise and work rapidly. He said, It is my hope that it will serve as a pulling force for innovation in the work practices of Toyota and the Toyota Group. However, due to all of the failures and disappointments, Toyota's attempts to work on EVs earlier than others may have left a sour taste in their mouth because it's evident that they weren't spending much on electric vehicles as Toyota had no electric automobiles on the market. Instead, the Toyota Mirai, one of Toyota's first mass-produced hydrogen vehicles, has invested in hydrogen fuel cell technology. While hydrogen has several advantages, such as being a renewable fuel source, being clean-burning, producing little noise, having short fueling periods, it does have several disadvantages, including a high total cost and a lack of infrastructure. In fact, a highly combustible compressed gas would still be present in the vehicle. Elon Musk has mocked hydrogen, referring to it as full cells, after his unsuccessful attempts to use hydrogen as a rocket fuel for SpaceX. Toyota has also been prompting a vehicle with the phrase, powered by all solid-state batteries, a technology in which the corporation is said to have made a breakthrough. This marketing technique provides the idea that Toyota is on the verge of releasing solid-state batteries, which would be the battery industry's holy grail. Toyota's solid-state battery, if they had something, might be 5 to 10 years away, stated car expert Sandy Monroe. What's worse is that we have no genuine knowledge of the battery's characteristics. Toyota has invested $13 billion in creating new technologies, the most recent of which being solid-state. However, solid-state is a difficult problem to solve. It may contain materials or procedures that are costly or difficult to get, making scaling problematic. This leads us back to Elon Musk's statement that prototypes are easy, production is hard. But if that's true, and Toyota is on the verge of a breakthrough, why is Toyota attempting to slow down the global shift to electric vehicles? Toyota was required to pay a $180 million penalty at the start of 2021 for failing to comply with emission reporting rules. Toyota failed to file 20 emission recall reports and over 200 quarterly updates on emission recalls, according to Electric. Sandy Monroe has even branded Toyota for influencing the U.S. government to postpone the adoption of electric vehicles. Back in March of 2021, Toyota warned the government about going electric, saying, If we are to make dramatic progress in electrification, it will require overcoming tremendous challenges, including refueling infrastructure, battery availability, consumer acceptance, and affordability. They went on to say that while rivals have made aspirational statements, less than 2% of vehicles sold in the United States last year were battery electric. Monroe also notes that it took Toyota 20 years to sell more than 4 million U.S. gasoline electric hybrid vehicles. While EVs only make up 2% of the market in 2020, they are growing exponentially at a rapid pace. EVs could almost double to 3 or 4% market share this year. Kathy Wood from research and investment firm ARK Invest has an ambitious prediction. By 2025, the EV market could grow to 40 million cars per year in just three years, almost half of all new car sales. 
Meanwhile, Tesla is preparing to open two new gigafactories in Germany and in Texas, which could over time more than double their capacity. Elon Musk is targeting to have Model Y be the best-selling car in the world potentially by 2023. This would mean at least surpassing the yearly sales of the Toyota Corolla, the world's best-selling car, at 1.5 million units per year. ARK Invest has done some research showing that electric cars now have a lower total cost of ownership than an internal combustion engine or ICE vehicle. This factors purchase price, maintenance, repairs, fuel, and residual value. Compared to the Toyota Camry, the Tesla Model 3, even the long-range version, is 6 to 9 cents cheaper per mile. Toyota has had trouble making the shift to fully electric, especially considering the history of the company and its past leadership with greener technologies. Even while Toyota is lobbying to the government, fighting electric cars, and trying to hinder their process, they have released concept designs for new battery electric vehicles. Toyota is aiming to bring 15 fully electric models to market by 2025. This will be quite a challenge since starting with just one vehicle has not been an easy feat for companies such as Ford, GM, and Volkswagen. At least three companies have committed to an all-electric future, whereas Toyota has not. Toyota instead aims to hit carbon neutrality by 2050. At this rate, Toyota's market share may be a lot smaller than it is today. The company also boasts 70 electrified vehicle models by 2025, but electrified includes hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and fuel cell vehicles, none of which appear to have much of a long-term future. Even Toyota president Akio Toyota is opposed to the Japanese government's electric future saying it could cost Japan 5.5 million jobs and 8 million units of lost vehicle output by 2030. We're already seeing early signs of decline with Toyota. The company usually produces 10 million vehicles per year and has lowered its 2021 guidance by another 300,000 down to 9 million. This is blamed mainly on chips and part shortages. However, Kathy Wood from ARK Invest has pointed out that they could be undercurrents in the market, including the shift to EVs rapidly changing customer behavior. In the end, Toyota isn't ready for the electric vehicle wave to hit the industry. They've invested in alternate technologies such as hydrogen and hybrid vehicles. Their aggressive lobbying against environmental measures shows that they're late to the game on EVs. They also have the most to lose, as their current production is one of the largest in the world, producing ICE or hybrid ICE cars purely. Toyota would need to replace their entire 10 million annual vehicle capacity to maintain their current volumes, starting from zero electric vehicles today. Electric vehicles also threaten the lucrative dealership, service, and park models. They have fewer parts, are meaningless to break, and have almost no maintenance. Competition from Tesla is gaining rapidly in unit sales and in mind share. Converting Toyota's entire ICE factory fleet to electric and source enough batteries gave the industry and the government pressure. It's virtually impossible over the next 5 to 10 years, even for the once greatest manufacturer on Earth. So, do you think Toyota will be able to navigate the transition to EVs? And where do you see Toyota's 10 million typical unit sales in 2025 and 2030? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you like this video, hit the notification bell and turn on all notifications so you can stay up to date with our latest uploads. See you guys in the next one, and remember, keep living life bullish.